Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me today. In this video I'm going to be following Route 5 from Stafford all the way to Stoke-on-Trent. For this ride today I've chosen to use my road bike and that's mainly because of the distance I'm going to be covering. From Stafford to Stoke along Route 5 it's about 20 miles and I've also made my way here on the bike uh, along Route 55 from Telford so in total I'm doing almost 40 miles today. If we look again on the Sustens website at the map of Route 5 between Stafford and Stoke we can see that the majority of it is off-road and I've broken it down into three sections. The first section being an old railway track going through Stafford, the second section will be on road and then the third section will be along the Trent and Mersey Canal into Stoke itself. I'm joining Route 5 where it meets Route 55 just outside Stafford Town Centre on what is now called the Isabel Trail and this is an old railway line that runs through Stafford. It's called the Isabel Trail after Lady Isabel Stafford who was the last inhabitant of Stafford Castle before it was destroyed after the Civil War. So let's get going on this ride and make our way down the Isabel Trail. As you can see the first section of the Isabel Trail is a gravel surface but it's quite fine gravel and it's very firm underneath so it's not a problem at all on the road bike. And this first bit of the trail heads over a sort of marshy area which is quite pretty and if you do take a look around there's a good chance you might see some of the local wildlife. I managed to see a swan nesting down in the reeds which was lovely to see. We're not on the Isabel Trail long before the surface turns to tarmac, so I feel much more at home on the road bike. Although it's best not to do road bike speeds down this section, as it can be quite a busy little track. It's also important to have that bell on your bike, just so you can give that all-important ring before you pass somebody. Those of you who watch my other videos will know I do like to talk about a bit of railway history. And here on the right, you'll see an old platform. And this is the platform of Stafford Common Station. And this was a station on the Stafford to Utoxeter Railway. Now this was opened in 1867, but it didn't last very long. It was actually closed to passengers in 1839 and then to freight in 1851. So like my last video, which followed Route 45 from Ironbridge to Bridge North down the old Seven Valley line, this is a line that we can't blame the closure of on Dr. Beechin. Now the section of line that the Isabel Trail actually runs on stayed open until 1975 just to serve an RAF base just outside Stafford. After only a couple of miles we come to the end of the Isabel Trail. The bridge in front of me goes under the ring road around Stafford and is blocked off and you can go no further. Now at this point you have two options. You can either take this right turn here, which is the official route of Route 5, which loops through a housing estate and back on top of that bridge that we just saw. Or if you're feeling strong, you can carry on to the end of the Isabel Trail to where the bridge is and there is a set of steps that goes up the side which will take you back onto Route 5 but obviously this means carrying your bike up. Whichever way you take, once you make it on top of the bridge you'll follow a cycle path around the edge of Stafford. This cycle path goes alongside the busy A513 which is a road that bypasses the north part of Stafford. There are quite a few junctions that we need to cross here so be particularly careful if you are with young children because some of them are quite busy. But we only go down here for about a mile before we take the right turn onto Marston Lane. Do be careful to look out for the small sticker on the post here that marks the right turn. Once you've made that turn, you will go through a small housing estate which is currently in the process of being built. But it's not long before you're properly out into the Staffordshire countryside on a lovely quiet lane. This second section of the ride, although it's not traffic free, it does use some lovely quiet lanes. I think in this whole section, which is about four miles long, I only passed about two or three cars. And for those cars that are travelling down here, they've put up these signs along the way just to remind them that there are going to be cyclists on this route. There are a couple of turns that you do need to make along this section, but the little blue signs are always there to let you know which way that you need to go. 
this road section lasts for about four miles before you come to the busy A34 dual carriageway. This road is one of the main links between Stafford and Stoke. And it's a very fast moving road, but don't worry, there is a cycle path down the side of it, albeit not the best one, but definitely preferable to cycling on the dual carriageway itself. I think this has to be, in my opinion, the most unpleasant part of the ride uh, on Route 5 between Stafford and Stoke. Although you are on a cycle path, you are right next to the busy dual carriageway with traffic coming past you at 60 mile an hour. There's also quite a few side roads that come onto this busy road, which you have to cross along the way. So it's a bit stop start and it can be quite bumpy up and down the kerbs. But as I said before, this is definitely preferable to riding on the dual carriageway itself. Now as I was coming down here, I did pass a cyclist in the other direction who was cycling on the dual carriageway. Now although this is perfectly legal, for me, it's something I would uh, definitely avoid. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Would you cycle on a dual carriageway like this? Fortunately, it's only about a mile down this road before we see this little blue sign on the bus stop, which tells us we need to take a right turn and get away from this dual carriageway. Here we go onto another short road section as we make our way towards the Trenton Mersey Canal. It's not far down this stretch of road before we cross over the River Trent and then we make our way towards the Trent and Mersey Canal and look out for the little blue signs just before the bridge that tell us we need to turn off and get on the towpath along the canal. From here the navigation is going to be really easy. We just need to follow the canal all the way into Stoke and Trent. My one concern is whether my road bike is going to be suitable for the towpath. I've never ridden this route before so I don't know what the surface is going to be like. I have ridden along the side of the Shropshire Union Canal quite a lot and the towpath in places can be very muddy and in some places completely non-existent. I'm hoping that as this is a national cycle route the surface will be a lot better and I will be able to make it on my road bike but there's only one way to find out. As soon as you come onto the towpath by the side of the canal you pass under a bridge and as you can see this is an extremely low bridge and it's one that I didn't actually cycle under. And this is something to be careful of along the whole route here along the side of the canal. Some of the bridges can be very low. Plenty of the bridges are high enough to get under on your bike, but also be careful because the towpath does narrow quite a bit and gets quite close to the canal as you go under them. A couple of miles up the towpath you'll find yourself in stone. And here the surface of the towpath turns to tarmac, which is fine by me on my road bike. Going through stone it does get quite busy so do be careful, even though it's tarmac again, I can't do road bike speeds and I need to make sure I've got that all important bell fitted just to warn people that I'm coming. As you pass through stone, you'll also go past a bike shop, which is handy to know if you have a mechanical and you haven't got the parts to fix your bike. You'll also find in Stone Town Centre plenty of places if you want to rest and some refreshment. You'll also pass four or five locks as you go through stone where the towpath will over narrow or you'll get this cobbled surface as you can see here which wasn't particularly pleasant on my road bike. There's also one that has a little tunnel. As you can see it's very narrow and very bumpy and there is a sign to tell cyclists to dismount and walk through this one which seems a sensible thing to do given the narrowness and the darkness of the tunnel but something that the kids will enjoy that's for sure. The Trenton Mersey Canal has 76 of these locks along its 93 mile length as it makes its way from the River Trent at Derby to the River Mersey near Liverpool. Construction began in 1766 and took 11 years until it was completed in 1777 and it allowed goods to be transported from the Port of Hull to the Port of Liverpool safely avoiding the bumpy roads at the time. As you leave Stone you do cross the canal a few times as the towpath switches sides. My favourite one being this one, as you go across the bridge and then switch back via a tight hairpin turn to go back under the bridge. Definitely want to be careful of though as you do come quite close to the edge of the canal there. Between Stone and Stoke, the canal gets quite quiet and you've only got the wildlife to keep you company, as well as the occasional passing train on its way into Stoke. If I had to choose, I think I'd say this was my favourite section of the ride, along Route 5 between Stafford and Stoke. It's quite serene and there's not many people about on this section of the towpath. You can also see the surface, although it's gravel again, 
It's a very fine gravel and perfectly fine to ride on on my road bike. With clear towpaths and a good surface, I was able to have a good pace and it wasn't long before I was on the edge of the area known as the potteries. And I knew I was on the edge of the potteries because of this building here with the huge Wedgwood sign on the top. Now Josiah Wedgwood was a big manufacturer of pottery back in the 1700s and he was actually a big influence on having this canal built. Now pottery by its very nature is quite fragile so transporting it on the bumpy roads of the time wasn't the best option, a lot of it got broken. So having the canal enabled him to transport his goods quickly and safely to the markets he wanted to go to. And having this canal meant that a lot of factories went up producing pottery in the area because they had this safe means to transport the goods to market. So we could say that this canal had a big influence in the potteries being the potteries. <laughs> And if that Wedgwood building, along with this sign that says welcome to Stoke-on-Trent, doesn't convince you that you are in Stoke, once you get to bridge 108, a little further along the canal, if you take a look over the water, you'll see through the bushes the Bet 365 Stadium. And this is the home of Stoke City Football Club. Canal towpaths in city areas generally don't have a great reputation, but this one was very pleasant. The surface was good and the signage was great. I really didn't need to worry that my road bike would not be suitable for this towpath. It's been great all the way from Stone to here. As you get to Stoke-on-Trent train station, Route 5 leaves the canal and heads to Stoke city centre. I decided to carry on up the canal along Route 555 up to Festival Park to finish my ride. I passed a classic potteries building with that signature shaped chimney before heading along a tarmac but pretty bumpy stretch of towpath up to Festival Park where I finished. I've been really impressed with the quality of the cycle route from Stafford to Stoke. Like I said I was quite worried about the towpath and how my road bike might cope with it but it's been a great surface all the way and some really pleasant riding and hopefully this video has inspired you to get out and ride this route if you haven't already. If you've enjoyed this video please please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you liked best about this video and any other routes you want me to do a video on. As always, thank you for joining me and thank you for watching. Take care.